uh, in this particular uh, video uh, it's like uh, 10 questions i will ask and i will answer those 10 questions so what you need to do is after once i display the question on the presentation you need to pass the video and you try to answer yourself and after that you compare my answer so like this for each question you practice okay so in uh, uh in, in each mock interview preparation like uh, it, in the test one i give 10 questions again in test two i ask 10 questions in test three i ask again 10 questions like that i will continue with this so it will be a sort of practice for you now the first question what are the two types of source files in c now you need to pass you need to stop you need to pause the video and you try to answer and after that again play my video and try to compare your answer with my answer what are the two types of source files in c so there are two types one is header file and one is implementation file so header files always ends with the extension dot h and implementation files always ends with the extension dot c so you have included so many header files std io dot h so c o n i o dot h so and your programs normally you save it with the dot c extension so one dot c or palindrome dot c like that so there are two types basically one is header file and another one is implementation file the second question what are type guests explain so in c language you consider any expression if one operand is of one data type and another operand is of another data type then compiler cannot evaluate such type of expressions then what compiler normally does is it converts lower data type to higher data type so the process of converting one data type to another data type is called type cast or type conversion basically there are two types implicit type conversion and explicit type conversion who does implicit type conversion compiler does implicit type conversion or it is also called implicit type casting so compiler so compiler does implicit type conversion or implicit type casting when it comes to explicit type con conversion programmer so programmer converts so that is why it is called explicit type conversion or explicit type casting so always lower data type will be promoted to higher data type this is very important because if you convert higher data type to lower data type then you will going to lose some data for example 3.5 lakhs bank has to give 3.5 lakhs to you if they round off and give 3 lakhs it is not acceptable so that is why higher data type to lower data type it is not acceptable lower data type to higher data type it is acceptable because 3 and 3.0 doesn't make any difference for a common man so integer you represent it in the form of float so 3 will become 3.0 it doesn't make any difference so if you want to uh, completely know about in detail type casting with the example and all so i will come up with a separate video for that now third question what are primitive data types so primitive data types means basic data types provided by the language so in c language we have char int short long float double long double these are the basic primitive data types what language is provided if not initialized what are the default initial values of following variables now local variable or automatic variable local variable or automatic variable by default it is initialized to garbage so garbage value or it is also called junk value global variable is initialized to zero register variable is again initialized to 
garbage or junk and static variable is initialized to zero static variable is initialized to zero next question what are type qualifiers what are type qualifiers constant volatile see basically we don't simply use const uh, const we use with some other data type for example const int a equal to 10 const int a equal to 10 it informs that it informs that a the value of a will be constant and you cannot change it so a will become like a read only variable so only you can read from a you cannot okay modify a so const is a qualifier type qualifier it should be used along with the data type and it informs that and it should be used when you when you initialize the things so that 10 you cannot modify in the program so value of a will be 10 only volatile so volatile int a for example if i declare volatile int b if i declare a particular variable with the keyword volatile it acts as a warning message to the compiler that if register is available by chance don't store b in register store it in ram store it in primary memory don't store it in register that is the meaning of volatile what are the floating point types available in c float double long double floating point means number with the decimal point is called floating point so float so most of the students they will not be knowing format specifiers for all these things and if they know also they will not be knowing how many bytes this float will occupy four bytes double will occupy eight bytes most of the students they tell for long double 16 it's not 16 it is 10 bytes so four bytes for float double eight bytes and long double 10 bytes so float is represented by percentage f and double is represented by percentage lf and long double is represented by percentage capital l small f capital l small f format specifier is also very important next what are aggregate types aggregate types are derived from basic types and they're also called as composite types so arrays structure and union or aggregate types available in C language what are the file streams that are automatically opened when a C program is executed there are three standard file streams std in std out std error so std in means standard input std out means standard output std error means standard error see it's like uh, uh, for us actually we think that okay i have cpu monitor all those things but if you consider okay operating system it is getting data from one file stream what is that keyboard the keyboard is considered as a standard input okay it is one file so operating system considers each and every device as a file so standard input that is keyboard standard output it's a monitor and standard error okay so this can be even a printer sometimes and a monitor so we can display errors on the monitor or we can take a printout of the errors so std error so most of the times it will be monitor we go through the errors okay so we observe those errors with the help of a monitor so standard input standard output and standard error are the three basic file streams automatically opened when a c program is executed you need not to do anything as a programmer or a user what are type specifiers see these type specifiers are used to modify the meaning of the data type for example unsigned short long let me explain first short long then i will explain unsigned to you see integer occupies two bytes in the case of 16-bit compiler and integer occupies four bytes in the case of 32-bit compiler but short occupies always two bytes irrespective of the compiler 16-bit or 32-bit long always occupies four bytes irrespective of the compiler 16-bit or 32-bit so 
when you are using think of the scenario 16 bit compiler okay so integer gives you two bytes but you want to store some population of a particular country think of the scenario two bytes is not sufficient then go for long int population long int population think of the scenario you are using 32 bit compiler integer gives four bytes you want to store age of a person age of a person maximum three digits so 100 to 999 you can finish it off within three digits why four bytes required at that point of time two bytes enough you have to go for short int age short int age when it comes to unsigned it is very simple when you know that the data will never be negative whatever data a variable takes it cannot be negative in some applications it cannot be negative for example your internal marks worst case it is zero attendance worst case zero number of students in a class worst case zero it cannot be negative then why you have to go for sign see take three bits for example take three bits if you take three bits number of combinations possible is two power three that is eight combinations possible but if i use this bit to store the sign plus or minus then only four combinations possible so if we get one bit extra to store the number we can actually store double of this so if we get only two bits we can store only four numbers possibility four possibilities if we get one bit extra we can store eight eight possibilities almost it will double so the advantage with unsigned is so for example unsigned inch number of students so think of think of okay so integer range is minus three two seven six seven two plus three two seven six eight so since unsigned int we declared so this negative value will not come it will become like we can store the value 0 to 65000 so from around 565000 change okay so almost double of this okay almost double of this what are read only variables so read only variables means initialized variables that can only be read but not modified for example const we discussed const actually a uh, const int a equal to 10 so const int a equal to 10 so you cannot modify the value of 10 okay so my value of a in the program thank you